Hi guys, Mrs. Centel here, and I wanted to share with you um, one of the new series that we have here in the Media Center, and this is actually a um, horror novel, a scary story. So I think there are five books in the series, and we have the entire series here. So if you're someone who enjoys, yes, five books. If you're someone who enjoys series novels, and you like scary stories, this one might be something you'd like to check out. Um, on the back it says, for this first book, it says Stroud shows his customary flair for blending deadpan humor and thrilling action and the fiery interplay among three agents invigorates the story. So this is The Screaming Staircase by Jonathan Stroud. On the front it says, it says Stroud is a genius at inventing an utterly believable world that is very much like ours, but so creepily different. And that's Rick Riordan that, that wrote that review. Okay, so the synopsis in the book says, a sinister problem has occurred in London. All nature of ghosts, haunts, spirits, and specters are appearing throughout the city, and they aren't exactly friendly. Only young people have the psychic abilities to, required to see and eradicate these supernatural foes. Many different psychic investigation agencies have cropped up to handle the dangerous work, and they are in fierce competition for business. In the screaming staircase, the plucky and talented Lucy Carlyle teams up with Anthony Lockwood, the charismatic leader of Lockwood & Co., a small agency that runs independent of any adult supervision. After an inv after an assignment leads to, to both a grisly discovery and a disastrous end, Lucy, Anthony, and their sarcastic colleague George are forced to take part in the perilous investigation of Combe Carey Hall, one of the most haunted houses in England. Will Lockwood and co. survive the hall's legendary screaming staircase and red room to see another day? Readers who enjoyed the action, suspense, and humor in Jonathan Stroud's internationally best-selling Bartimaeus books will be delighted to find the same ingredients combined with deliciously creepy scares in his thrilling and chilling Lockwood and Co. series. And I'll read you a couple pages as well. <clears throat> Chapter one, the ghost. Of the first few hauntings I investigated with Lockwood and Co., I intend to say little in part to protect the identity of the victims, in part because of the gruesome nature of the incidents, but mainly because, in a variety of ingenious ways, we succeeded in messing them all up. There, I've admitted it. Not a single one of those early cases ended as neatly as we'd have wished. Yes, the Mortlake horror was driven out, but only as far as Richmond Park, where even now it stalks by night among the silent trees. Yes, both the gray specter of Aldgate and the entity known as the Clattering Bones were destroyed, but not before several further, and I now think, unnecessary deaths. And as for the creeping shadow that haunted young Mrs. Andrews to the imperilment of her sanity and her hemline, wherever she may continue to wander in this world, poor thing, there it follows too. So it was not exactly an unblemished record that we took with us, Lockwood and I when we walked up the path to 62 Sheen Road on that misty autumn afternoon and briskly rang the bell. We stood on the doorstep with our backs to the muffled traffic and Lockwood's gloved right hand clasped upon the bell pull. Deep in the house, the echoes faded. I gazed at the door, at the small sun blisters on the varnish and the scuffs on the letter box, at the four diamond panes of frosted glass that showed nothing beyond it except for darkness. The porch had a forlorn and unused air, its corners choked with the same sodden beech leaves that littered the path and lawn. Okay, I said, remember our rules. Don't blab about everything you see. Don't speculate openly about who killed who or how or when. And above all, don't impersonate the client, please. It never goes down well. That's an awful lot of don'ts, Lucy, Lockwood said. I've plenty more. You know I've got an excellent ear for accents. I copy people without thinking. Fine. Copy them quietly after the event. Not loudly. Not in front of them. And particularly not when we're six foot six Irish dock worker with a speech impediment and we're a good half mile from the public road. Yes, he really was quite nimble for his size, Lockwood said. Still, the chase kept us fit. Sense anything? Not yet. But I'm hardly likely to, out here. You? 
He let go of the bell and made some minor adjustment to the collar of his coat. Oddly enough, I have. There was a death in the yard sometime in the last few hours, under that laurel halfway up the path. So it kind of has like a Sherlock Holmes feel to it, um, if you're familiar with those kinds of stories. Um, so it, it's, it's a nice, I think, combination of it, it being scary, it kind of being a mystery, and I haven't gotten to it yet, but they talked a little bit about it having some humor as well. It does seem to be um, more of an advanced book, so if you're looking for a challenge, this series would be a great option for you. Thanks for watching.